Hello, my fellow investors. If you invest in VGFC or keep an eye on this company, you probably noticed that the share price plummeted as much as 22% today. The drop happened following the news of 30 million registered direct offering before market opening today, based on market cap of 200 million last trading close. It is translated into 15% dilution. In this video, I'm going to explain what is the registered direct offering, why the company is doing this, and its impact to individual investors. According to its Form 6K filing to SEC, the company has agreed to offer to institutional investors approximately 15 million units at the price. Of two U.S. dollars per unit. Each unit consists of one common share and half common share purchase warrant. Each warrant gives holder the right to purchase one common share at an exercise price of U.S. two dollars and thirty-five cents for five years from the closing of the offering. If you have no idea what warrant is. Think of it as option issued directly by a company to an investor. In our case, it is VGFC to institutional investors. Registered direct offerings, or RDOs, are hybrid securities offerings, as the company is listed in public, but the offer is done through private placement. There are a few key aspects related to RDO. One, registered to SEC. A registration statement has to be made before the offering. According to Form F10, filing to SEC on October 5, 2021, the company may offer and issue from time to time securities up to an aggregate initial offering price of 100 million during the 25 months period after the filing. This is basically the quota of dilution approved by SEC in a 25-month span, about 50% dilution based on 200 million market cap. I will talk further about this later. Two. A best efforts basis. The participant investors have no obligation or commitment to purchase a fixed number of securities. The placement agent will work on a best effort basis. Therefore, the final deal sold could be less than 15 million units or more, based on the demand, but could not be more than a quarter registered to SEC. Three fixed price. The price is usually set at a discount of a market price. I'm talking about the price before the drop. The securities will be sold at two dollars per unit as agreed. Now that the market price has dropped below two dollars per share, why don't they just buy from the market? The reason behind this is that institutional purchase volume like this will cause a great volatility in price. They will have to pay a large premium if they buy from the market. Four wall crossing. Participant investors typically sign a non-disclosure agreement that allows them to cross the wall, thus become insiders and gaining access to material non-public information. Five unrestricted, the security offered under RDO are readily tradable. Why the company decided to make the offering and why now? According to Form 6K filing, Very Good intends to use the net proceeds from the offering to scale its production, to expand its geographic reach for accretive acquisitions within the plant-based food sector, for research and development, for marketing initiatives, and for general corporate and other working capital purposes. If you have been following the company, you probably know the company is ramping up production in Rupert and Patterson facility. It takes a lot of capital to put things in place. Here is a part of production equipment purchases from Q2 2021 earning report. On this page alone, the purchase value is almost two million, and this is only a part of equipment for Rupert facility. Patterson facility is planned to have a production capacity almost three times of Rupert. On the distribution side, in order to work with large retail stores like Costco and Walmart, the company would also have to accept longer payment terms. It's easy to imagine the urgent need for cash. By Q2 2021, the company had 5.9 million Canadian dollars in cash. Cash from operation was negative 9.4 million Canadian dollars for the quarter. Previously. VGFC has secured a 70 million Canadian dollars credit facility, of which it has already used almost 2 million by last quarter. With an interest rate of 9.95 percent, it will be a heavy burden for the company's development. It would also make the balance sheet look very unhealthy. Why didn't the company make the offering back last December when the stock was at its peak? One share overvalued. 
Although I am bullish on the company, I have to admit the peak price last December was short-term hype. The institution investors know better than us, since they would have insider information. Two. Trading volume. Here is a chart of trading volume before Nasdaq listing. The average trading volume was only one million shares. After the up listing, volume in four days equals a whole month's volume before Nasdaq. If similar offerings were made before the up listing, it would be a liquidity risk for institution investors since they could not cash out their position without causing a landslide in price. Three. Voting control of business. Before the app listing, there were fewer institutional investors interested due to liquidity and company fundamentals. If offering were made at similar scale around 15% dilution to only one or two investors, the two co-founders may have the risk of losing voting control of the business since each of them holding less than 14% of the company. Now it would be possible to spread the shares among 10 or even more institutional investors. Management could still carry out strong execution without hands tied on short-term target. To be fair, in June this year, the company actually made a similar offer to Canaccord, probably the only institution interested back then, with around four million units, less than one third of offering this time. What if the share price continues to drop considerably next week? Will the offering be cancelled? In that case, the company and the placement agent. Would be very likely to initiate the green shoe arrangement. Green shoe is an over allotment option to stabilize share price. The underwriters can exercise their green shoe option and sell 15% more shares. If share price dropped, the underwriters can buy back 15% of the shares. This enables underwriters to stabilize fluctuating share prices by increasing or decreasing the supply. Similar arrangement has been applied previously with Canaccord deal. What is the impact on individual investors? Let's first look at the shareholder structure of VGFC and BYND. VGFC current institutional investors is negligible at 0.5 percent, while it is more than 50 percent for BYND. Stock market is, after all, a Wall Street game. Share price can't have enough push without their big money. The offering is an invitation to welcome institutions on board. Soon you will see analysts raise target price and rating. That's how the game is played. Should we really panic for 15% or even 50% dilution? Beyond Meat went public on Nasdaq in May 2019, the quarter before Nasdaq listing. The company had about 7 million shares. One year later, it increased to 66 million shares. We are talking about 950% dilution. Financing at low cost. That was exactly why the company went on public at first place. VGFC did it smartly so far without losing too much control. What will I do next? As the offering closes on Tuesday, I would love to see that all the 15 million units or more are sold. It will be a signal that these war-crossed insiders are very bullish about the company and they think two dollars per unit are fairly priced. In that case, I may buy more shares if price is still around or below Friday closing. If the deal finalized is way less than 15 million units, I may consider selling part of the shares. I am a current shareholder of VGFC. The video may contain biased opinions. Please do your own due diligence. My position before Friday was 8,000 shares at cost basis of two dollars and thirty-six cents. I purchased 4,000 more shares on Friday at cost basis of one dollars and eighty cents.